Hello, welcome back to my channel. Recently, the low-risk investment products that are backed by government, such as Singapore saving bonds and T-bills, have been one of the hottest topics in Singapore as the interest rates offered are reaching its new record high every month. Local banks have also joined in to raise the interest rates of their fixed deposits and savings accounts amid a rising rate environment. With so many low-risk investment products available that gives decent interest rates, how can we evaluate which one would be the best option for us? In this video, I will be sharing with you my thoughts on this. Towards the end of the video, I will also be sharing how I seize these opportunities to diversify my portfolio. Let's take a look at the latest new hype of the OCBC 360 account interest rates. This is the tiered rates of the savings account. You can see that there are different rates for the different amount of balance in your account. Additionally, the more categories you fulfill, the higher interest rates you can earn from your savings. If you look at the summary below, for example, if you were to credit your salary of at least $1,000, $800 through gyro and manage to increase your average daily balance by at least $500 monthly, you will be earning a maximum effective interest rate of 4.05% a year for your first $100,000. Many people may be misled by this effective interest rate of 4.05% a year. For example, if I only have $50,000 in my 360 account, assuming I have also met the same categories, salary and save, I am only able to earn 3.2% and not the 4.05%. 4.05% as advertised because the interest rates on the first $75,000 is lower than the next $25,000. This 3.2% will actually be lesser than the yearly rates of the December's SSB issue. So before jumping into putting all your money in bank savings accounts, it will be wise to do a simple calculation to determine the actual interest rates you will be getting based on the amount of savings you have. Okay, it may be hard for some people to meet the categories to get higher interest rates from their saving accounts. For example, if you have retired and does not have a monthly salary, and so it is also hard to meet the salary and save categories. For these people, and if you have a lot of cash on hand, fixed deposits, SSB and T-bills may be other alternatives you could explore which are low risk as well. Check out my previous video where I have also shared on whether to invest in fixed deposits or SSB. Now let me briefly touch on what is T-bill. T-bills are issued via an auction process where competitive and non-competitive bids are placed. A competitive bid allows applicants to specify the yield they are willing to accept, while a non-competitive bid is one where investors only specify the amount they want to invest but not the yield. Most people, retail investors like you and I, will go for the non-competitive bid, as most of us may not have sufficient information or knowledge in what yield to bid. Amid rising returns, demand for T-bills has also been heating up and there is a maximum amount you can apply for each issue. This is the allotment result. As you can see here, only 49% of the non-competitive applications are allotted. This means that if you applied for $100,000, you will only get $49,000. Unlike Singapore savings bonds where interest is paid out twice a year, T-bills are issued at a discount and investors will receive the full face value at maturity. So with so many options, which one should you invest? Let me categorize these three products based on the tenor and the flexibility to withdraw. Now in this first category, we have fixed deposits and T-bills where the common tenor is usually shorter such as 3, 6 or 12 months with no flexibility to withdraw during the tenor period. SSB will be in another category by its own where the tenor could be up to 10 years with flexibility of withdrawal anytime. Now that these are split up into these two categories, you can now assess which product would be suitable for your needs. For example, if you need 20k in 6 months time to pay for your renovation or wedding, then you may consider applying for fixed deposits or T-bills. Perhaps more towards T-bills as the rate seems to be the highest among these two options as of November. Otherwise, I would recommend to apply for SSB first. Reason being, 
first of all, the rates of the SSB are guaranteed for the next 10 years. Unlike T-bills and fixed deposits, where the rates are only fixed during the short tenor, there is no guarantee that you will be able to fetch the same rates after the end of your tenor. For example, if you have bought a 6 months T-bill of $20,000 in November 2022, the T-bills will mature in May 2023. The interest rates may be much lower by the time it matures in May 2023. And if you are not intending to use that 20000 in May 2023, you would have missed out on the yield that you could have earned if you were to put in SSB. Hence, it is not worth to chase for that small spread in yield for funds that you are not intend to use it for the next 3, 6 or 12 months. Secondly, SSB gives you the flexibility to withdraw anytime. In any instances where you think that there is a better alternative to earn higher yield or if you need the money urgently, you may withdraw the funds and reallocate to somewhere else. Amid the rising returns, demand for SSB has been heating up. So while SSBs may sound very appalling, you are unable to get 100% allocation anymore. What this means is, should you have a lot of cash, example $100,000, you are no longer able to put all the $100,000 into one single issue of the SSB. The amount that you will be allocated depends on the demand for the issue that you are applying for. For instance, in the November's SSB issue, the maximum allotment was $10,000. What you can do is to apply every month until your savings have been fully subscribed. The downfall for this is, example, if you have $100,000 with each month's allotment at only $10,000, you will need to apply for over 10 months and we have no visibility of the direction the rates would move over these 10 months. Most fixed deposits, on the other hand, will allow you to place higher amount but the downside is that the rate may not be as attractive as compared to SSB or T-bills. For now, it seems like the allotment you will get for T-bills could be higher than SSB but the rates are only for 6 months or 12 months. So if you are holding a lot of cash, perhaps you could start to plan out your allocation of your capital between SSB, fixed deposit and T-bills based on your cash needs at present and for future. After elaborating so much on SSB, T-bills and fixed deposits, you may be wondering why not just leave the money in OCBC's 360 savings account? Well, while it is the simplest move, as what you have to do is to keep your money with the bank and still able to earn a pretty decent rate that is not far off from the yield from SSB or T-bills. However, for saving accounts with the banks, there is this main key variable that we are unable to control, which is the longevity of these interest rates that the bank offers. Given that OCBC had revised their 360 account interest rates upwards twice in the year 2022 alone, similarly, they could also revise the interest rates downwards any time should the Fed decided to decrease the interest rate. When that happens, you will have to live with whatever rates they revise to. This is because the bank often adjusts the rates according to the market rate. While the yields of fixed deposits, SSB and T-bills also moves along with the market rate, the main key difference is that once we subscribe into these products, the yields are guaranteed for the tenure that we subscribe into. All in all, I think all the options that were mentioned earlier are pretty decent and good for people who prefer low-risk and safe investment products, especially in this high interest rate environment. However, look at the floating bank interest rates for home loan now. It is easily above the yields of the products I mentioned earlier. Hence, do note that the yields from all these low-risk and safe investment products are not the best and will not make you richer. It is more for preserving your wealth. Investing in stocks could be one of the better options if you want to earn higher yields to cover your bank loan or to even grow your wealth. Especially now that it is a bear market, there are a lot of opportunities that you could buy. However, personally, I am using this opportunity to diversify my portfolio and take up some low-risk investments. For instance, previously, I would leave my emergency funds all in my bank savings account that earns less than 2% per annum. 
and invest the rest in stocks. But now, I'm shifting these emergency funds to SSB that could earn me at least 3% for over 10 years. I am also allocating some money to T-bills for funds that I will only need after 6 months or one year, while the rest will be in stock markets. I also love to find out from you guys on how you are allocating your funds now in view of all the rising interest rates. Please leave a comment below and share your thoughts with me. I hope you find this useful and remember to like this video. Thank you. Bye.